Uh, my name is Aldo Pietro Paolo. I'm the Director of Solutions Engineering at Signal. And uh, that title is fancy for I like to solve complex authorization challenges. Uh, where's Katie? I think Katie's up here somewhere. But um, <clears throat> what uh, I focus on is basically on, um, in this particular context, the OWASP top 10. And I focus on actually mitigating some of those uh, hacking attempts. So if you were here for the previous talk, uh, all these uh, approaches are, you know, uh, vectors uh, are very common, quite common. In fact, I'm working on a project now that, that has those and frankly uh, uh, some interesting vectors with cloud service providers dealing with hosting APIs. But these are your, your uh, top 10. Um, you know, first and foremost, uh, some of the big ones that I particularly see is the broken object level authorization um, and the object property one uh, are very common that I see uh, quite often. And um, what I'm going to talk about is basically API defense in depth approach. It's not the only approach, as, as Jonas knows. By the way, huge kudos to Jonas. He, he uh, uh, collaborated on this demo that I'm going to give today. So uh, just thank you, Jonas. Um, and these three layers basically um, allow uh, somebody to establish um, an API defense in depth approach where each layer of protection against uh, API hackers has to yield a green. Um, uh, status uh, at each layer, starting with the authentication layer or the identity provider layer um, and the OAuth, OIDC protocols and so forth. Yes, there's some possible vulnerabilities there with OAuth and so forth, but um, it's heavily used in the industry today um, as well as OIDC. Then uh, the other uh, major layer in the API defense in depth approach is what we uh, call the API gateway or uh, a, a platform like Kong that uh, accepts requests uh, for an API resource or endpoint and orchestrates that request to the actual API provider, uh, the API itself. Um, and then last but not least is the uh, dynamic access control layer or the authorization platform that um, inspects uh, these API requests um, coming in through uh, the identity provider and the API gateway and then finally gives a yes or no uh, back to the, in this particular case, the API gateway like Kong. Um, and the way that works is basically through the implementation of security plugins in your middleware or in the Kong API gateway in this case. So uh, that's layer one for the demonstration that you're going to see today. That's the security identity server. By the way, not just because they're here, but it is actually my favorite identity provider. I've worked with most of them in the market um, in my 20, 22 years of experience. Uh, but I particularly am a huge fan of the security one. And uh, what I've done in the demo today is actually, um, and you'll see this live in action, is uh, authenticate a user principle, uh, and then the security server will ma make it quite easy, actually, to uh, um, uh, create authorization codes and uh, the uh, access codes, actually, that protect the API. And uh, after that, um, the second layer, which is, uh, the Kong gateway goes into action. Um, in the Kong gateway, what it, it'll do is through the security plugins and the signal plugins, will capture that request and that context. Um, and security will, again, validate and introspect the uh, token and so that you know who it is. But also, uh, we have a signal plugin that does the same. So I use the trust but verify method. So yeah, I trust that security <laughs> is doing its job. The identity server is minting these great tokens and. Uh, introspecting them, but uh, also the signal plugin goes back and says, hey, yeah, I got this request from uh, the, uh, excuse me, I got this token from the request context. I'm going to go ahead and validate and introspect it myself. In fact, that's how the authorization uh, platform gets the identity, the principle of who's actually making the API call. Um, and that's very, that's very important because the uh, API defense in depth um, approach uh, is literally just that, a layered approach. So the deeper you go, the more access control uh, you need. And in our case, the more dynamic access control you need regarding on the context. So if the user is in Europe or the user in the US, what type of API the user is trying to access? What, what does the payload look like? You know, do I, is, there, uh, is there an access token in the request? Oh, there isn't? Well. That's, that's the identity server's job to in, you know, go back and, and uh, uh, re-challenge the user. And uh, this particular layer also supports uh, encryption as well. Uh, and there's a bunch of plugins that you guys haven't been 
uh, aware of the Kong um, uh, platform or API gateway, they also support a variety of security plugins that uh, do much more than just you know authentication and and, and authorization. So uh, layer three is really important, as was highlighted in the previous session, right? Because if you don't have authorization at the object level or at the object property level, uh, it can get very complex to implement author authorization logic directly in your APIs themselves. You could do it, of course, but um, you know, it prob probably there's you know, better time spent developing business logic that the API needs versus authentication logic or authorization logic. And in this particular case, if you have uh, an automated you know, dynamic, dynamic access management platform that's already pre-integrated into your API ecosystem or your API platforms, uh, then, then it's easier to delegate uh, the authorization externally as well. And there's several approaches for uh, providing access control, uh, several models, right? So uh, actually David is gonna speak about uh, yeah, feedback or policy-based access control. We're, there's also re, you know, relationship-based access control. Um, there's also role-based access control and attribute-based access control. You could use one or all of those together to provide this particular layer, to provide that level of strength uh, and that level of context-based authorization for uh, providing that level of control to your, your API. So uh, dynamic access management, first and foremost, what we believe in is in zero standing privileges. Is it a reality today? No, right? You guys know that you can't really have <laughs> Travis's, is, is, yep. Uh, you guys know that, uh, but it's kind of, you know, everybody has to have a dream. You know, I have a dream to, to get to zero st standing privileges. Uh, dynamic enforcement, this is actually really key. Um, the dynamic nature of the system in this particular case, you'll see the demo of the authorization system responding to the dynamic nature of the authentication identity provider because the identity provider is really key on authenticating, in our case, Alice or Bob. And the demo you're gonna see is a uh, sample patient record you know, demonstration where a patient is trying to access their own uh, health record and I'm actually going to try and hack the system live to say, hey, I want access to Bob's patient record. It should not let me do that, I hope not. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're gonna see that live. Uh, and of course, audible by default. Um, the uh, high level architecture is actually quite simple. On the left hand side, you have the API client, which is uh, Postman in, in my case, and a really simple uh, React application that shows you the authorization code, because I'm cap capturing that as, as security redirects back to the, to the, uh, to the app. Then um, you have Curity as the identity provider, uh, the Con Gateway as well. The Con Gateway has the Curity plugin and the Signal plugin installed, so uh, that automatically provides the authentication and authorization for uh, the API backend, which is a very simple, you know, patient records uh, API. In fact, I, I um, uh, inherited that from from uh, Jonas' uh, example. And uh, on the bottom side is Signal. Uh, it's Signal is actually based on. Um, two major concepts. One is it ingests uh, sy systems of record or data from systems of record. In this demo, I actually ingested data, uh, metadata for the uh, patient records from a CSV. Pretty simple, just literally just file upload CSV and it, it sucks in the data and then it puts it into that nifty graph that you see there, that graph directory. And that establishes relationships and gives you the ability to consult metadata to make the authorization decision. Then you have the policy engine, which responds to queries from the protected system, in this case, Kong and um, others, and the policy management, which allows you to create policy as well. This is, this is the demo flow. Basically, uh, quite simple. You uh, authenticate with the identity provider, which is security, um, and then you send that uh, code that you received back from the authentication process in through the Kong API gateway the Kong API gateway gets that um, access code or access token, excuse me, um, and then it, it, the security plugin introspects that, validates that, makes sure that is active because you don't want a request coming in and through the gateway that is not active. In fact, if it's not active automatically, the request is invalid. But what if the uh, request is active, but accessing the, the wrong patient's uh, record? That's where the signal plugin call comes in because after Security says, yep, it's good to go. This is, this is good from an authentication perspective. The uh, signal plugin kicks in and says, well, just wait a second here. 
let me see who this is. It, it calls security again, it says, oh, this is Alice. And then it calls Signal, this, that access service that you saw, and asks, is Alice able to access this particular patient record? They're trying to get to this record. The, the service says yes, she's good to go. And that response goes back to the gateway. The gateway then allows the entire transaction to occur. And then the response goes all the way back to, in this case, Postman um, in, the, in the demo. Policy is very simple. Um, it basically is expecting a principle from the identity uh, per, or the identity server from Curity. Um, and it's broken down in very simple snippets, as we call them. And uh, the second uh, snippet there is an asset. So it's looking at a patient record um, coming from a database. Now, it's not the patient record itself. It's information about the patient. It's, it's uh, um, patient, uh, basically public information, non-personal identifiable information that uh, represents the patient, but also the relationships with the different uh, uh, record uh, identifiers in, in, in the system. And then uh, last but not least is a conditional snippet that checks whether the uh, person that's making the request is the, in fact an owner of that uh, patient record. If that's the case, then uh, the whole system goes through. So let's watch this uh, in action. Let me bring this up here. Okay. And got the conference there. That's us. And my eyes are pretty bad, so my apologies. All right. So what we're going to do here is let me actually log into all the systems. So this is uh, our dashboard signal. Um, and you see here, uh, we have policies, protected systems, and systems of record. Uh, we have the Kong API gateway here. And within the Kong API gateway, we have that active policy. Here are the little snippets that uh, we were talking about earlier, where it checks for the principle, and it checks for the actual HTTP verb. So in this case, it's get. Um, and then it checks for the uh, asset, you know, what, what asset are we dealing with, which is a patient record in this case, and then the condition, whether or not the uh, person is the same person that owns uh, that, that record. Um, and of course, we have the identity server here. And uh, you'll see we have two clients. One is for the gateway. So the first one is the uh, gateway client. And then the other one is the uh, application that I'm using in order to initiate the authentication and receive a authorization code back. And you'll see that uh, the capabilities there, by the way, um, uh, sorry, guys, a, 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 a shameless plug here. But uh, one, one of the things that I like is this particular view because it quickly gives me a view of the client authentication necessary and the user authentication necessary and authorization as well, including the scopes that are, that are needed. So one thing that the server is doing, the identity server, is actually it has a record scope where um, when I ask for the authorization code, it includes the right uh, information in my tokens as they're being minted by the identity server. But uh, anyways, that's the uh, security identity server. And then uh, you have a little React uh, app that I wrote uh, in about two minutes, real quick, very simplistic. What this does, it basically uh, gets the authorization code. Uh, there's currently no authenticated user, so if I click on get authorization code, you see that the uh, security identity source says, okay, great, uh, you're asking for uh, this, oh, this is OAuth interaction, by the way. Who's the user that you want to authenticate? And I want to authenticate Alice. Uh, let me see here, oops, no, sorry, meant to log in. Clicked on the wrong, there we go. And I'm authenticated, it was that fast. So security already authenticated Alice and it sent me back the authorization code and you notice the authorization code value there. And I'm going to actually now request, request an access code. 
access token, excuse me, from the security server and says, great, now I need, and my eyes are pretty, okay, here we go. Get access token, okay, so what I'm gonna give it is, I'm going to give the security server this code that I received back. I'm gonna save this, send, and I, it took too long, yes, I gotta go, yeah. <laughs> Yes, thank you guys. <laughs> it is, okay, so this is why, boom. So as you can see, very secure system. It's all live here, and where are you? Here we go. So let's go ahead and copy the code. There you go. And we have the access token. I need to make sure I copy. Okay. And now we're going to go and introspect this guy so you can see. And you see that that token is actually Alice. That's the subject that we're interested in. Now I'm going to go for the patient record. So I'm going to say, get me the record with ID, ID 1. And sure enough, it says signal unauthorized. That patient record is for Bob. But since I'm making a request as Alice, it's, it's not authorizing me. So notice, I am an authenticated user, but I'm trying to get Bob's record. I shouldn't have access to that. I shouldn't be authorized. So that's actually signal at work. Now, what if I go for zero, patient zero? Uh, that's, that should be Alice. Yeah, and I do, I do get her. I do get her record. Now, um, going back to Signal, you, you should see here in the logs, you see a bunch of um, authorization records or, or authorization logs. So notice you get the first deny, so it's Alice coming in, and then you get the uh, allow for the asset ID of zero. The first deny was uh, for the asset ID of one, but that's, that's Bob's, excuse me. And just to mix it up a little bit here, let's actually kill the session for, for Alice and establish a new one. But this time, we're gonna be Bob. And there's the authorization code. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And go back to Postman. Go to Awesome. Thank you, Curity. And my eyes are oh, okay. Thank you. You just do that, just right there, right? And let's see who's in this. Let's go ahead and introspect this guy. And yeah, it's Bob. So let's go for a record. And Bob, uh, oops, I didn't save that token. So signal unauthorized, why? Because he's trying to get to Alice's record. Sorry, Bob, but you need access to your own, which is number one, and he should be authorized. Yep, he's authorized to access that. And if we go back to signal, uh, let's refresh. Yep, there it is. There's Bob as the principal ID that's coming in. Now this is coming in, again, from Postman through the Kong API gateway introspected by the Curity Identity Server, context caught by Signal, authorization plugin, calls out to Signal, hey, can Bob access this particular asset, this record? Signal makes a decision, logs it, sends it back through the gateway. The gateway says, authorized, ready to go. And that is the end of my demo. Thank you.